that we're gonna be little camera that I'm gonna be using. All right, guys. So what we have here is the right side. That's the outer tie rod. As you can see, the boot shot as well as ball joint. That's the inner tie rod, and that's loose as well. You shouldn't be able to just take your hand and just wiggle it like that. It shows you that the both ends, the ball joints, are shot. That's real loose. Yeah, that's that needs to be replaced. Alright guys, so there you have it. That's the right side outer tie rod. Pretty much we're trying to break that nut loose. I do apologize because the uh, camera is mounted on my chest, which is not pretty much going to show you exactly step by step of what I'm doing. Alright, just a few more turns. We should have this thing loose. Or at least, I would say a few more turns, we'll have this nut off. Alright, so there you go. We got the nut off. Now we got to use a hammer to help knock that sucker loose. Uh, Alright, so now I'm taking the sledgehammer. And I'm pretty much using the sledgehammer to tap against our right outer tire rod. Took a couple of attempts with the sledgehammer, so now I'm gonna use the pickle fork and a smaller hammer just to get that pickle fork in there. And sometimes that smaller sledgehammer works, but you know, with the years that this tire road's been on, it's pretty, pretty on this snow. I went back over with that nice size sledgehammer. And as you can see, now we're able to remove that outer tie rod with the pickle fork. Alright guys, now it's time to pretty much remove the outer tie rod. So now what you want to do is twist the outer tie rod and count. So each revolution you want to count. So as you can see, every time that I spin the outer tie rod, uh, the ball joint down, I'm counting. So roughly there was 11 and a half turns. So now what we're going to do is take the tape wrap it around the inner tie rod as you can see I'm pretty much rolling up that nut and what I'm just demonstrating is what I'm going to do under the vehicle so with the used tie rod I'm going to take the tape wrap it around the threads use some scissors and cut it and that's basically going to determine how much the outer tire rod is going to rotate on to the inner tire rod. So you can somewhat see what I'm doing. Putting the tape on our old inner tire rod. And I'm pretty much going to take the scissors. And get a nice squeeze on that tape. Now usually I would keep the tape on and remove the inner tire rod completely but for the video just wanted to show you exactly what the tape serves so as you can see I'm gonna wrap the tape around a new tie rod and adjust the nut and that's pretty much going to determine how far the new outer tie rod is going to mount onto the inner tie rod Alright guys, so here we have the inner tie rod. There is a washer that I'm going to try to remove. As you can see what we got there, got our pliers. We're just squeezing down on that washer. It is very tedious to remove. 
and again this camera doesn't have good quality it's pretty much decent when it comes to uh, swimming <laughs> so there's a washer in the back which is very tedious so I highly recommend a small flathead so some people call this a pick tool it's pretty much got a hook on it and I'm using that to bend back as you can see there that little uh, metal tie eventually I get it pried open now the short way of doing this is just cutting that boot that's a short way and now uh, you can see I'm basically removing the boot however at the end the boot gets caught up and then that's when I have to basically cut it and as you can see I'm using my uh, wire cutters to pretty much strip away the boot now the reason why you have to do that is because when you put on that inner tire on it needs as much clearance as it can get remember that inner tie rod tool has to slide in okay now you can see how loose that inner tire rod is that's really loose and as you can see the new tie rod it's not budging so that's a good comparison so right there is a washer that pretty much locks on to your inner tie rod you pretty much have it bent into your tie rod so I showed you with that light so I'm taking a flat head to bend that washer right there so there's one up top and there's one at the bottom taking a flathead and a hammer to unbend that washer it's very very tedious to keep that flathead on uh, alright so we got that washer loose pretty much use that flathead and bang the crap out of it and now I'm able to unscrew our inner tie rod. Now make no mistake, I did use the inner tie rod tool to pop it loose. So after I banged out the washer, I used our inner tie rod tool to unloosen it. So as you can see, that washer is banged up. And pretty much the, the washer wraps around the body of the inner tie rod tool to keep it from spinning on loose so that's why it's so hard to get it removed so and then there's their inner tie rod tool that i use well, as you can see we already got our new inner tie rod on but i'm using this as a example okay pretend this was the bad tie rod we're gonna pretty much take our tool and we're gonna place it over because we're trying to pretty much get the tool to get into that flat surface so that way this thing can pretty much grab on it so just feel around and again it still has that it still has the uh, washer on here this tool can take can uh, take this uh, inner tie rod off without you you know having to worry about getting that washer on so I had it click so we good right there feed it on through and a tie rod feed it right on through and yeah, she's locked in okay so as you can see Plug her on up. There you go. And now you can pretty much 
and tighten it, uh, which will be push it down that way to break it loose. Again, this is the setup. As you can see, even though I had previously tried hitting this washer, I couldn't get it out. Um, only way to get this sucker off was with this tool. It was the much easier way to get it out. I will say that. I got this washer here and I'm gonna try to line up, line this up on like that. So that way it matches these threads, these indents. I really recommend when you do this job to do it with a inner tie rod tool. These typically run 35 to $50 and they are absolutely worth every penny. Um, the problem that you're gonna have is that inner tie rod, uh, no matter how much you bend or hit this washer, it's gonna be a pain to get um, it's gonna be a pain to get this thing off. That's that's just that's just that. Um, I had an issue because the washer was actually, you know, it kept locking itself in the threads. The tools are pretty much uh, in a tie rod tool. Allow me to take this, uh, I guess you call it adapter or head, uh, wrap it around it, and then take my tool and just pretty much put the thing on through and then I'll strap it from there. Uh, looks like it goes like that. <clears throat> well, so now we got it there. So now we're gonna take our new inner tie rod and kind of thread her in there. I'm gonna try to Make sure I get it as angled as possible. So I'm more than likely have to take them off. Put my phone down. All right, so got her installed. Uh, it's pretty much hand tightened. Got that washer on. Washer was on first, then the tie rod on second, and now. See if we can grab her. See if I can bring it to the top. Because it's going to hit this thing. I'm trying to find the best position. That seems like that's the best position. So now, I'm going to show you what I'm doing. And I'm going to put my phone down. So this is pretty much what I did before. I put this thing on. And I did like that. So there you go. Um, give it a nice tug to tighten her up. Um, you don't have to go way too tight. You know, you're not supposed to You know, tighten it. You're supposed to tighten it, but not just overdo it. Um, there is a gear in your rack and pinion. You don't want to strip that. Pretty much hammer that washer in. So, you see here, we're just pretty much hammering this washer. Excuse me. Can't stop burping. So hammer it in on both sides. This side is gonna be tricky. As you can see it right there. Up, upwards. Man, I'm gonna have to figure <laughs> I'm gonna have to figure something out. But um pretty much you're hammering this to overlap this layer here, both sides. <sighs> Good luck. All right, I got both sides.
Mm -hmm. Here's a tip. <laughs> this is what allowed me to get the other side. Um, it's tricky, but um, you take this kind of uh, work your way on through sideways. You can kind of get the get it to grab that tip of that washer and just clamp it down. You know, breath. It'll, it'll bend it back. Let's go ahead and get this washer off. Grab this bad boy. Put it the correct way. So it goes around this thing here. And more than likely I'm gonna do it underneath. Take your zip ties and we wrap it around. And you zip tie that around. And then you do the same thing for here where that indent is. So I believe it goes like that. And then you zip tie here. Spinner. So we're gonna take our tape that we used before. And just trying to get our tape on it. It looks like we're actually good. Let me get this washer to get a little bit closer to the tape. Now it's not gonna be perfect, but there we go. It's gonna go. We're pretty much gonna install it. I think we got a roughly 11 and a half. Um, and once it's on correctly, then we're just gonna remove this nut, drop it down, put that nut back on. She's good to go. Bingo, baby. Um, so that's it. Um, let me show you once I got this sucker back on. So I just noticed that my phone was not recording. Anyhow, I got the outer tie rod connected to our inner tie rod. Got the nut. I'm getting ready to tighten it down. It's already installed. Got the nut on the bottom. So I'm gonna tighten up the nut on the bottom, um, which is gonna properly seat the tie rod. And I'm also going to tighten up the nut up here so that way everything is tightened. Um, we got our boots on, our zip ties on. See that zip tie all the way back there. Uh, so we're good. She's looking good. Uh, we're good to go.